All right. So in this episode, we're going to talk about uh, a question that was submitted. And, uh, you know, the basic gist of the question is, how do I look at something and not check? And this is, you know, really kind of applied across a, a variety of, of different compulsions, whether it's looking at the stove or looking at someone and seeing, checking if you're attracted, um, you, you know, like, it, or looking, I mean, it could, it could go anywhere, right? So I'll read the actual question, um, but I'm broadening the question out because um, what happens with, with a lot of submissions of questions is it gets so narrow to like this one theme and realizing that it, it's essentially this question can be applied to almost anything. Right. How do I look at something and not check if there was blood on it or if it was contaminated or, you know, whatever. Right. And, and so the question is really, how do I look at something that I normally look at and not check and not do a compulsion? OK, so that's the question. Um, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Matt Cotty and I am an L LCSW as well as the founder of Restored Minds and the creator of the AAA Response. Uh, if you want more information about that, you could check out uh, the new book that I just released called From Stuck to Unstuck. or a link down in the notes. You can also check out our two-day workshop, which will give you a uh, you know really high-level view on the AAA Response. Um, and uh, obviously, we have our 12-week program over at RestoredMinds.com, so you can always apply for that as well if you're looking for help on your road to recovery. So let me go ahead and read the the full question that um, that was was asked. Uh, so, and and again, this will remain anonymous. Um, and for those of you that have questions, we also we have a little link down there. Uh, feel free to submit a question for us. Um, you know, and we can review it and consider it for the show. So, the question reads: How do I look at a person and not check my attraction? Can I check my attraction in a way that's not an OCD compulsion? Um, so I have H O C D and even then like it could just be, you know, sexual orientation OCD or, um, it, it, you know, and this applies, like I guess, to any real form of OCD. Um, and it's like, every time I see a person I am checking, I don't know how to stop. Um, I think it's the only thing still keep me in the loop spinning and I've gotten better recently, but I know it's holding me back. Love the book, by the way. So first off, thanks for the compliment on the book and, uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's dive into it. So The first issue that we really need to understand here is that you need to be aware when you are in your fight or flight response. When you're in your fight or flight response, you're going to be hyper aware of potential threats. Okay. Or, or, or in, in really you're going to be hyper, you're, you're going to have a hypersensitivity and you're going to be Really, really feel this need to analyze your environment to make sure that you're safe, which makes sense biologically. If we just think about it, my nervous system is saying I might be in danger. And then we start scanning, right. To see that's really the first compulsion is just this, this scanning that we're doing, right. The checking to see is like the second compulsion that we're doing. And this could be anything. I'm checking the locks. I'm checking the windows. I'm checking how I look in the mirror. I'm checking how my body looks, right? I'm checking, you know, uh, other people around me. I'm checking to see if they, you know, if they're, you know, if I'm worried, it, you know, we, we could be checking anything. So let's not get hyper-focused on the theme so much here because this applies to anything. When you're in fight or flight or when you're in yellow, the you're, you're going to be, again, hyper hypersensitive and you're going to have because of that you're in, instinctively going to be scanning your environment so just notice just noticing that that's going on like i because a lot of times we're not even aware of the feeling in the body we're, we're disassociated from it because we're just we're just engaging like scanning the environment so even just noticing like i'm scanning my environment right now and reeling back and, and feeling into your, your chest and your sternum of like, Hey, like, what am I feeling right now? You know, like just even noticing that that means you're feeling danger, you're feeling unsafe. That's, that's really the first step there because what, what you're doing is, is by, by scanning your environment all the time, you're still validating that you're in danger. And then it's taking a step further and like looking at specific triggers and kind of, again, analyzing them. 
So, and yes, like, you know, you're going to see people throughout the day, right? That's the thing when, when it comes to, um, when the OCD and anxiety tends to lock on to attraction or, uh, you know, um, trying to question, make you question your sexual orientation. And this can happen multiple different ways, right? This isn't just about like, um, you know, cause, cause so many people get caught up in like H O C D, but I mean, I've seen people who identify and have always identified as gay or lesbian now start to wonder like, well, what if I'm straight? Right. So it's, and we don't call it, you know, straight OCD. Right. Like, I think, I think Mark Freeman said that once and, and then, but then also it's like, am I attracted to family members? Am I attracted to animals? Am I attracted to, you know, like what if I'm attracted to children? Right. So, I mean, like this, that can happen. I, I've seen that happen with, with any thing in the environment, essentially uh, when it comes to OCD and anxiety. And again, we're not talking about, uh, sexual orientation stuff or, or even sexual attraction. What we're talking about here is again, the, the nervous systems getting activated and the person's checking and scanning the environment. All right. So very different stuff just to, just to clarify that. But again, the, the first is just noticing that you're in fight or flight and noticing that you're scanning your environment. So therefore you're reinforcing the idea to your nervous system that there's potentially a threat in the environment. When you feel safe and you feel safe enough to enter a social engagement, the reality is you're not checking and analyzing everyone, right? You're just engaging. Now you might notice if someone's good looking or not and whether a part of the same sex or the opposite sex, uh, you know, whatever, right? It, it's just like, oh yeah, good looking person you know, maybe not good looking person, right? You might make that assessment, but it, it, it it's not in this hypervigilance that's happening. Like the person who wrote this question is experiencing. So beyond how do you not check people? The first step is just noticing that you're in fight or flight and then doing your best to just bring safety to like, Hey, I'm, I'm okay. I can feel this feeling. I can let it run its course. And by not reinforcing to your nervous system that you're in danger, your nervous system will shift back into green. And then you'll be able to appraise your environment through a lens of safety. So, so the, the underlying issue with this, in my opinion, is that you're appraising your environment as dangerous and you're reinforcing it by scanning. And so when you notice that you're scanning, even before if you're evaluating someone, notice that you're scanning. And again, do your best to even call that out and then bring your awareness back to your feeling state in your body, feeling into your, in your chest, in your nervous system, your fight or flight system, and allowing that feeling to be there without doing anything to validate the idea that you're, you're in danger. And as that feeling surfaces and diminishes, your nervous system can begin to believe, oh, okay, hey, I guess we're safe, be able to shift more into a green and social engagement. And that allows you to just kind of operate and move into the environment without having to scan and evaluate everything. So hope that makes sense. It's a great question. Uh, I mean, but this applies for any checking, like I said, or any, like, you know, anything you're looking at. So if you find yourself looking to see if something's contaminated, if something had some contamination ob you know, on it, if you're looking when you're driving in your mirrors to see if you may have hit someone, all that stuff again is, is, first what 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 came before that is this feeling of unsafety uneasiness and by being aware of the feeling and actually feeling that feeling in its entirety through your system and not doing anything to reinforce it that's what causes it to pass which then allows your nervous system to shift back into safety so hope that was helpful and again um you know we have some links down that can expand on that further you know some of our resources as well um you know if you're looking for help with this check out, um, you know, our 12 week program over at restoredminds.com because that will give you much more detail on uh, implementing that. So thank you so much. And I wish you a great week. Hey there, hope you enjoyed that recent video. Uh, we really would appreciate your support real quick if you could like and subscribe to our channel. And if you're looking for help with OCD and anxiety, please check out the links below or visit restoredminds.com as we'd be happy to help you on your journey. Thanks so much.